right uh, here they are asking which of the following is si unit for stress right uh, unit is uh, newtons per square meter i hope you remember the equation right f over a right okay uh, which of the table only contains vector quantities right here in the first one acceleration is a vector momentum is a vector and weight also a vector so the answer is a right a spring is stretched by an applying a force of three newtons the elastic strain energy stored by the spring is 0 0.04 joules which of the following expressions gives the extension in meters of the spring right i hope you remember this equation w equals half times fx which means the work done by us on the spring right uh, this energy transfer is given to the spring right energy transfers to the string so we can write the elastic strain energy stored in the spring is equal to half times fx so what you have to do here is we have to subject x then it is 2 times e over f uh, then 2 times e, e is 0 0.04 joules 0 0.04 joules and f they have given it is 3.0 newtons so the answer is a right ah, in the fourth one a cyclist moves along a horizontal road at a constant speed she then moves at the same speed uphill with constant gradient now here constant gradient and here also a constant speed and they're asking about the output power right uh, first thing i'm going to do right i hope you remember the definition for power it is energy transfer per unit time so energy transfer means here it is work done so you can write w over t uh, here i'm going to make that w the work done in uh, terms of force i will tell you why right force times the distance into the direction of force over t right now you can clearly see right power in terms of what speed p times f times v right now you have power in terms of speed but here the cyclist is moving along the road at a constant speed. She then moves at the same speed, right? The speed doesn't change. So we have to worry about only the force. So when he is moving, when she is moving along this road, right? What are the forces acting on, right? I just do a cube, right? Only the friction. So she needs to overcome this friction. So the thrust force given by cyclist is Right, I'll call Ft thrust force and here's the friction. So the thrust force given by the cyclist is equal to F. Right? The V is same. So the power will be what? Uh, when she is moving along the horizontal road, it is F times V. F means the friction. So when she is moving along this hill, right? Here is she. And again we will have the friction. Right? She needs to overcome this friction now not only the friction but also the weight component of the weight right here this is weight and here this is f let's call this angle over here is theta now the thrust force right thrust force should be equal to what here it is thrust force ft thrust force now the thrust force is equal to f plus w cos theta so the new power new power is equal to now new thrust force is f plus w cos theta right times v the previous one it was just f times v and you, here you can clearly see theta is constant because here they have mentioned it is a constant gradient so you don't need to worry about theta w is constant so f is also constant so the power when she is moving along the hill should be greater than power when she is moving along the horizontal road right here this is incorrect because here the power is greater and here these two also incorrect why here the power is changing with the time no right it cannot happen why we all know theta is constant w is constant and f is also constant and v is also constant right so the answer should be obviously the d Okay, in the fifth one, a student dropped a 
for the tennis ball the tennis ball fell for time t and had a velocity v just before it hit the ground the student used the equation of motion to calculate t and v this equation ignore ar resistance which of the table shows how actual values compared with the students calculate value for t right and here he has dropped right so if you want to calculate t i hope you remember the equation is c equals ut plus half a t square and you don't need to worry about u because he's he has to drop the ball so u is zero so a c equals half a t square so if i subject t right t square right for the simplicity right two times s over a r then what happened to a if there is a resistance if there is no a resistance just the weight m times g but if there is a resistance then there will be a drag force so acceleration will decrease so if acceleration is decreased t will be increased so t will have a greater value right what will happen to v right v square equals u square plus two ways but we don't need to worry about u square now it is two ways right then we all know acceleration is has decreased due to the air resistance so v also we will be decreased so the answer should be c for the fifth one right the sixth one this is very simple right they're asking t they have given all the data in the diagram so if you make it little longer and you know what is this angle it is 80 why if you have two parallel lines this and if you have straight line this and these two angles will be equal to each other right so what we are going to do here is we are going to resolve uh, the forces along the horizontal sorry not the horizontal the vertical direction right so it is equal, weight is equal to 2 times because we have 2t 2t cos 80 so if you subject t it is equal to w over 2 times cos 80 so the answer is c right here right a force is applied to stretching spring the graph shows how the length of the spring varies with the applied force and they are asking right which of the following gives the stiffness of the spring right i hope you remember this equation f equals minus kx right this is from hooke's law and we don't need to worry about this minus sign why it says the direction of the force is always opposite to the direction of the extension here they have given the length of the spring so we don't need to worry about minus sign so i'm going to make it f equals kx right here suppose it has some initial length we don't know it let's assume it is l naught or whatever it is right so if it is l naught we are going to have some length from here to here we call it let's call it x right and this force is let's call it f right so um, suppose that we need to take uh, our equation for this uh, graph then it should be f equals k times one uh, k times x minus l naught right so it is f equals because this is our extension now x minus l naught right so kx minus kl naught right this is our equation for the graph right you can clearly see it has a negative intercept over here right if you make it a little longer you will have negative intercept here it is so uh, what will give you uh, its stiffness this the constant stiffness constant it is k so here it is mx minus c this is the type of graph applied force is the f and here we will have uh, our x and here it is our gradient so it will give from the gradient of the graph right eighth one right we have a cube like this right here yeah. suppose it has a cube and um, the, all the dimensions let's call it x right and the density is rho density is equal to mass per unit volume 
and they have given the weight right uh, weight is equal to mg so we can subject our mass it is w over g now mass per unit volume so it is w over g and the unit volume i'm going to place it over here 1 over v uh, instead of v i'm going to make it x cube right because it is a cube solid cube right then if i subject x what you will get here is w over rho g it is 3 right so the answer is for the eighth one d right uh, in the ninth one a force is applied to stretch two wires p and q until the wires break each wire is made of a different metal the stress strain graph shown right uh, here they say p has a greater breaking stress no it has a lower breaking stress so that is wrong uh, p has a greater breaking strain no that is also wrong right? p has a greater yield stress than q right yield stress is over here it is where the uh, a metal undergoes a sudden increase in extension which means its atomic structure is rearranging right so here it is so you can obviously see that uh, p has a greater yield stress so the answer should be c and here in the d uh, they say p has a lower young modulus now you can clearly see the young uh, the p has a greater gradient right gradient is equal to young modulus why the young modulus is equal to p is equal to stress over strain so it is the gradient so p has a greater gradient which means it has a greater young modulus so this is wrong tenth one an object moves from rest with uniform acceleration for time t the acceleration time graph for the object is shown x and x is the area under the graph between zero uh, time zero and time t right first thing we have to understand it is starting from rest so s equals ut plus half a t square i'm not going to write ut because it is zero s equals half a t square and we need to find s half times a t right here we have it is a and here it is t so a times t is equal to x right so instead of a t i'm going to write x times t uh-huh then you can clearly see answer is over here it is xt over 2.